All right, gonna take a minute or two here, answer one of the objections that's brought against me. They say, where's the fruit of Brian Denlinger's ministry, King James Video Ministries? Where's the fruit at? Well, this is my going to the post office today. I'll just show you what came just today at the post office here in Bridgewater, Maine. First of all, a neat little coffee cup from, got that right? Yeah, Time for Truth. Uh, my friends over there in England, uh, Brother John Davis, and uh, appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Uh, definitely a neat little coffee cup. And um, had a guy send me a new version, the New Living Translation. I'll show you that down the spine there, if you can see it, I hope. NLT, see it? Okay, going to be doing a little review on that, but I'll read his letter in a minute. But then I have uh, four letters. Okay, that we received we just are isolationists you know we don't deal with people apparently and like i said we do deal with people locally here we do talk to people and things like that but i'm not going to record that because it's privacy right and i had somebody you know some guy wrote me the one time and he said you need to disclose you know your your donations and things like this oh, that's private information okay he's like you need to have a paypal audit then you give away all the names of private people and their donation amounts. Uh, no, you're not entitled to see that. All right? If you read the Bible, you would see that your giving is supposed to be in secret. All right? I don't care if somebody wants to come here and talk to me and stuff like that and see what we do with the ministry and things and where the money goes to with the donations and whatnot. Fine, whatever. But I'm not going to spread that stuff online. I mean, I could make $5 and there'd be people that would be upset about it online, you know. But I'm just going to read a couple of these really quick here. Uh, this one, um, I'm not going to, I can't show the names, but, you know, uh, trying to figure out how to do this. Um, this little note in here, it said, uh, thank you, Brian, for all you do. Um, we so love your video ministry and teachings. It has been such a blessing. Okay. Uh, just to show you here, I'm going to have to cover up the name. There it is. All right. There's no fruit produced here. Remember that. Just a nothing ministry. I'm just an isolationist and all this funny stuff. Um, I'll read this one next, I guess. This one's from Canada. Uh, see if I can just... You know, quickly show this like that. You can see it's another handwritten letter. Again, yeah, I can't. This is people's private stuff here. I don't share names. Dear Brother Brian, thank you again for your great work. We really appreciate your videos. I was really impressed with your video, Will the Rapture Be Blamed on Radical Islam? We were in Germany last month and were sad to see our home country being overrun by Muslims, about 70% young men. That's the whole point. They're not women and children fleeing. The media shows small children being killed and stuff in the war and women and things, but then they ship in the young men. They're leaving the women and children in Syria and all these other countries to be slaughtered. Um, uh, the government just allows them in. Alex Jones, not sure about him. Yeah, he's no good. Uh, if you're watching this, please don't watch Alex Jones. He's no good. I watched him for years and years and years. He's a, he's a fraud. But uh, definitely not a saved man either. But uh, Alex Jones once said that they are lying to us about the numbers. And I, I would have to agree with that. I do think it's a lot more going in there. Uh, these you know, Muslim armies of men. Uh, the same seems to, hap to happen in our small town here in Canada. Dark Muslims are just popping, popping up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Predominantly white areas and stuff like that. Uh, where you don't see many black people and things. And... And all of a sudden, there's some Muslim walking by. And you're going, okay, this is really weird. They're getting them in place, you see, for the eventual war that's going to happen with Islam. Um, did you know that the elite wants to breed a brown race uh, too stupid to understand their agenda, but intelligent enough to work? You can find some interesting... Um, websites on the European genocide. I'm not a racist at all, but the Word of God tell us, tells us that he created the boundaries 
Um, now the so-called elite is trying to mix up everything. And that's absolutely true. Um, th this has been a thing throughout history uh, where you have elites coming in and basically messing up the people and in, you know, causing inbreeding and stuff like that. That's what's going on. And again, you say, well, that's how dare they, the racist statement about um, the elites want a uh, brown people and stuff like this. Uh, well, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that is what's going on. They're miscegenating with Africans and bringing them in and trying to get them to mix with white people and things like that, Europeans. That's exactly what they're doing. And, you know, if you're African, if you are black, um, they're trying to mess you up, okay? I'm going to be showing a little bit more on that in a future video, too. Um, it, isn't, it isn't that whites are superior and whatever. We're different. Let's keep our differences. Let's keep the unique characteristics that God gave us. Uh, finishing up here, it says, You are right when you say that we are decreasing. We still witness to people, but they just don't want to listen anymore. The rapture must be close. Um, God bless you and your family. Name signed. Um, sorry about my handwriting. I'm sitting on my bed, not feeling well right now. Sorry to hear that. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you very much for your letter. I appreciate it. Okay. No fruit. Remember, there's no fruit from this ministry. Here's another one. Um, I'm trying to do it this way. See? Nice stationary here typed out. It says, Dear Brian, April 4th, 2017, by the way. Thank you so much for your video ministry. Words can't describe my gratitude for the encouragement and knowledge you have provided. Your ministry was a major contributor, contributing factor to me finally getting right with the Lord after over 30 years. Your guidance was also very helpful while I searched for a church. I found a little group of believers opportunitybiblebaptist.org who meet in the party center at an assisted living community. Praise the Lord, that's good. Home churching, that's, you don't have to meet in a home to be a home church. Small fellowships, meeting someplace, that's fine. All right. What a breath of fresh air, she says. Um, most recently, your video about the beginning of sorrows and an older one about 1 Corinthians chapter 11 regarding a covering for women were extremely helpful. Thanks again. And, you know, signs, essentially. Okay. Get this one back in the thing there. And then... The other letter here, this is really neat. Uh, they made this for us right there. I thought that was kind of neat. It's it's uh, Amazing Grace. A little ribbon hangs down there. This kind of neat little things, handmade things we get sometimes. It's just so special. We we really, really enjoy these. And this is, I mean, we keep all of our letters, but this is the kind of thing that we'll set around the home or something like that. Uh, And, um, okay, you can't see the name. The name's on the back, but I'll just show you another letter. Read it here quickly. Dear Brian, hello. We hope you and your family are well and having a good day. Thank you for your encouraging teaching videos. My husband and I are learning much following along with your study on Revelation. Thank you. Your study has sparked questions and more study of Revelation. Thank you. Well, that's the whole point of it. I mean, I appreciate that. Um... I saw today you posted a video exposing John MacArthur. When I was newly saved, I purchased one of his Bible commentaries, foolishly thinking I needed supplementary help to better understand God's Word. We've all done that. I've done it myself. Thankfully, God showed me quickly I only needed to rely on Him to teach me. What really worries me with easy believism and Catholic teachings, people not only are not truly saved, but do not get to know God. Yeah, they live in delusion. It's, it is sad. I have learned how patient, loving, corrective God is by experiencing the pruning work He has worked on me and my life. I have gotten to know who God is and how He teaches and loves me by reading His Word with Him and with His help. I hate that the Pope and others are trying to take that away from anyone. Yeah, really. I am sorry I will wrap this up. I do, I do want to apologize for writing such a long letter to you last time and taking, talking about things God was in the middle of teaching me that I did not fully understand when I wrote your letter. 
I am very sorry for that. Don't worry about that. That's fine. We, that's totally fine. I am trying working on talking writing less. I get too excited to talk with others about God and lose myself in being too much of a burden or taking up too much of others' time. I am really sorry. Don't, no, that's okay. <laughs> you know, when I say about this, I'm talking about people. When I say about people wasting my time, I'm talking about people that are just like with just, they really don't want answers to the questions. They just want to continue to pose questions. Um, I enjoy, I love letters like this. It's a great encouragement. Um, Thankfully, God keeps me busy taking care of my family, husband, and son. God has used the last few years to keep us pretty isolated in Him and His Word. Not many in our lives know God or want to. Yeah. So again, I am very sorry for not thinking and taking up so much of your time. Please don't apologize for that. We pray you and your family are always well. Thank you. God bless you and your family. They sign their name. Um, you know, like I said, you know, please don't apologize. It's, uh, we appreciate this, you know, letters and things like that. We just, uh, it's like the highlight of our day. You know, we go to the post office and, and we get these letters and we, we love to hear what people are going through and, and, uh, how God has used this ministry to help them. Uh, that's, that's why we continue doing it. I cannot get it back in that envelope. So I'll just set it there. Um, but really nice. This thing here definitely has some crazy stuff in it uh, that this guy sent me. See, he's got some marks there and stuff, you know, some things. So I'm going to do a review of this in another video, this new living translation. It's the uh, mosaic. It's like I never saw one of these before. Let's see if I can get it there. Yep. So I thought that was kind of interesting, kind of unique. But... Uh, We'll read this letter. Uh, okay, I don't think that there's anything. You know, this one's typed. It's fine. Um, Dear Brian, I would like to use this letter to address a few things about your ministry and why I sent this package. Now, I would like to encourage you to continue preaching. However, I have seen a few things that you have thought. Okay, I think it's supposed to be taught that are contradictory. Please make a video addressing these issues because they are too big to just ignore. And I know I am the only, I'm, I'm, okay, I think you meant to say, I'm not the only one who sees them. These issues can be found at this link. Puts the link there, Fervor for Faith, Contradictions of Brian down there. Okay, um, before I go on there, uh, you can cut up anybody's video and make them look like they're contradicting you know, and what a lot of people do is they'll take old, old videos where I do things or say things and they'll come out and they'll say, um, you know, look at this and here's what he does now. And what they don't do is they don't show you the video where I corrected it and say, hey, I was wrong for what I used to say or I was wrong for what I did. I took the old video down. You know, they do this to me all the time. They, they are, there are people who literally, their life is all about hating me now. And it's just like, they just try to, you know, they just chop my stuff up and, and make it look like I'm contradicting myself, you know. So, but they'll continue reading. All the man does is give a quick description of what you taught and then shows your video of you teaching it. Now, there are some places in Fervor for Faith's video where I am suspicious that he, he cut off your video to change what you meant. It's exactly what they do. But most of the things he gives are rock-solid contradictions and I plead that you address these things this man has brought to my attention. This is, there is also another video here that I would like for you to explain. Um, and he gives the YouTube link there. Brian Danlinger's wife contradictions. Okay, um, I think that... Uh, okay, yeah, let me continue. Now I don't agree with some of the comments this guy makes, like how he says you're a false teacher, but he makes a good point from your video that you said you would never let your wife on camera, yet you later continuously let your wife on camera and teach. Please address this. Okay, I'm going to be addressing that in the video coming up. Um, again, they don't show you the fact that that old, old, old video was taken down after we brought out her testimony and explained, fully explained why she was going to be on camera. They don't do that. I mean, it's evil report is what this whole thing is. These people are just coming out and just slandering me. I mean, if, if I wanted to take these people to court, I could take them to court and sue their pants off. But I don't do that. That's not me. 
you know. Um, I figure they're miserable and, and lost enough that, you know, that's their payment. Um, I'll be addressing the thing about my wife coming up in a future video. Um, now, something I would like to say that you are teaching that I personally know is wrong is that you say that Ken Hoven is a papist and or a charismatic working for the poop. <laughs> I think I meant to say pope, but poop works too. Uh, Malachi chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. Don't confuse me for a Kent Hovind supporter because he's clearly in sin by fornicating with this new woman of his because of what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 31 through 32. However, Kent Hovind said in a video he did with my brother, laughing, I don't care what the Pope says about anything. That was Kent Hovind's quote. You can see it at, gives the thing there, YouTube Christian Skeptic, Christian, Kent Hovind versus Agnostic Atheist at 38 minutes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Kent Hovind himself said that his the purpose of creation science evangelism is ecumenical. All right, the ecumenical movement is from Roman Catholicism. They had the ecumenical council and things like this. Um, the whole thing of uh, the Second Vatican Council and things, um, it, ecumenicalism, ecumenicism, whatever you want to call it, uh, it is Roman Catholic. So for Ken Hoven to come out and say, you know, um, you know, the purpose of my ministry is, and it was in his court affidavit, by the way, not just our opinion. Court affidavit saying that the purpose of his ministry is ecumenical, and he also said that he took a vow of poverty. Okay, that's what Jesuit priests do, as well as a lot of other priests and things, but um, and he's doing things for the greater glory of God. Ad majorium de glorium is the motto of the Jesuit order. So again, uh, you say, but he came out against Catholicism. Read the oath of induction for the Jesuits. It talks about if you have to speak against our holy church to deceive people, right? Um, that doesn't mean anything. Okay, continuing here. I would also like to rebuke you for you being against the five solas and for the videos you made on it. <clears throat> I am not a Protestant or a Lutheran, but the five solas are biblical. Now, this isn't me answering a matter before I hear it, but you quoted in your salvation, in your quote, salvation has never been by faith alone, video, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, showing that it is by God's grace, by grace through faith, 10 minutes and 24 seconds. However, don't forget the other sola that says grace alone, showing that the solas do not say it is only by faith, but by grace as well. All the five solas go together, and they are not a false doctrine, despite the fact that the reformed papist Luther said it. So it's kind of unreasonable for you to attack the five solas. So please at least admit you are wrong about being against the five solas. However, you speaking out against Christians and Lutheranism was a good thing, and praise God for your passion against them. Okay, a lot of people, it's like people only hear what they want to hear. Okay, what I am saying is, with this thing of the five solas, it's, it's these traditions of men that get elevated up, and you look it up, and it's like, okay, this, doesn't, this wording does not appear in Scripture. And I understand you can say certain things that line up with the Scriptures and that might not specifically be spelled out. Bible is not a Bible word. Trinity is not in there, okay? But you see the Godhead. You see Scripture, you know, for the Bible. Okay, I understand that, right? And, and yes, I do believe in Scripture alone, right, as our final authority. But when you say five alones, you're entering Cuckooville, Nuttyville. And that's the problem that I have with these five solas. You can't have five alones, all right? If there's two, then the one is not alone anymore. There are two of them, okay? That's what I'm saying. It's you're entering Cuckooville when you start to say five alones. It's weird, all right? And, you know, I just don't understand why people can't get that. And see, what's being used is these people come out with these five souls and they're lifting it up and the easy believism heretics are coming along and they're grabbing it and they're saying salvation has always been by faith alone. And what I'm saying is our job, your job as a Christian is to come and put faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay, that is what makes salvation happen for you. All right, your faith, it's not of works. I've never taught works. Again, people are, are getting all upset about that. They say, well, you, I saw you say salvation is by works alone. Watch the whole video where I say it. Right? Some, some idiot brought out this video and he was cutting my video all to pieces. And he, he says, 
shows me where I say salvation is by works alone. But he cuts out where I say in the millennium. See? Again, people are chopping my videos all up. They hate me. They hate my guts. These enemies out there. So what I'm saying is, yes, it is by God's grace. God's grace, not of our works. Faith. Our part is faith in what God did. All right? But to say grace alone, faith alone, in Christ alone, you know, they can't have more than one alone. I don't know, understand why people can't get that. That's what I'm rebuking. Uh, continuing. You're a teacher, Brian, so don't forget you are more accountable to God and men than any other. So please do not just throw around teachings and accusations like it's no big deal. Things like calling Richard Bennett a papist, for example. If you watched any of his videos, you know he is greatly against the Catholics and believes the KJV is the only word of God. I question the KJV is the only word of God thing, but that's another issue. And you can see that he is trying to live godly in Christ Jesus. So despite him being a Protestant, don't just accuse people. Make sure you have an absolute grounded proof that they are wicked before you say it. Um, you know, the thing of, of Richard Bennett, my main issue with him is this Reformed theology stuff. It totally messes up the future. There is no rapture. The, there is no Antichrist. There's, the book of Revelation is symbolic or it's been fulfilled in the first century. And, you know, people, oh, well, you have to study Reformed theology. You don't have it exactly right. Um, uh, well, I've heard a lot of different contradicting things within people who call themselves Reformed. All right. So I can study one branch of it and still uh, people from the other branch will say, well, you know, whatever. It's just, it's, it's a messed up bunch of nonsense. And if you can't see, the book of Revelation is about to be, you know, fulfilled, uh, coming to pass, and you can't see the raptures getting nearer and stuff like that, that's why I question people's salvation. You know, it's just as plain as day. Also, as you know, you shouldn't make fun of people because of their character. Now, I don't know if you do this much at all, but I did see you make fun of Ed Fenninger in your Five Solas video because he was monotone. Again, people don't understand this monotone when you talk with a very boring voice like that and stuff. Dr. Ruckman taught, uh, and I've, I've seen this thing, he taught that that was a mark of devil possession. Okay? There's no Holy Spirit there. It's just this like extremely, God has not given us the spirit of confusion, you know? And it's like these people are just so confusing and they just go around in circles, these hyper dispensationalists. You know, it's devils. That's why I made fun of him being monotone. All right. Uh, God is no respecter of persons, so please repent of this thing, though it is a small thing. I do not support it at all. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, I mean, you know, Paul called uh, men in his day evil beasts, slow bellies, you know, stuff like that. But I'm not allowed to do that. You know, because I'd say about Jesus, you know, calling him serpents and generation of vipers. But then people say, but that was Jesus. <laughs> Am I not supposed to be Christ-like? I can't speak like Jesus spoke. You know, I'm convinced that there are people that literally want me to be vague and ambiguous and then they would consider me a good preacher. You know, it's just ridiculous. Um, other than the things I've mentioned in this letter, I don't have much else to say when it comes to correction. I would like to encourage you to continue in the Lord and obey every word of God fully in the King James Bible. God bless you, and please hearken to my words in this letter. And please, Brian, pray for me as well, because I am not some holy man who can rebuke anyone. I am still having issues with sin, and I am still being corrected in doctrine. Please pray for me, and I will be praying for you as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, okay. As... as uh, Okay, I'm just trying to see if there's anything personal in the rest of what he's saying, but I'm, it's fine. Now, in regards to the package I've sent you, as you can clearly see, it's in a New Living Translation. I have no need for it, and I know you can expose it for the wickedness it is. As you may see, it is a mosaic edition of the NLT, and it begins with tons of portrayals, or portraits, excuse me, and has many quotes, all approved by the markers of the NL, makers of the NLT. You'll see immediately why I sent this thing to you when you open the cover. I suggest you look at some of the bookmarks that I marked um, so you may see some of the stinky people the Tyndale House Foundation puts in this thing. It's pretty horrible. Um, they also have some satanic Catholic portraits as well. I also added a few notes and highlights as well, just in case that helps you see and expose them. 
Also, just a quick history of this specific Bible. It was originally one of the many Bibles being given out to the prisoners of the Evansville, Indiana, uh, Vanderburg County Jail by a pastor that visits there often. My father works at the jail, so he took one home and gave it to me. I was appalled that these things were just being given away to the prisoners. So thank you, Brian, for your work done for the Lord of all, and I hope your ministry prospers in the Lord. I hope this blesses you, and I hope that you show this garbage Bible for the nonsense it is. Also, forgive me for this letter being longer than 2nd and 3rd John combined. <laughs> Appreciate that, humor. But I just had a lot I needed to say to you, and I've been wanting to say that I've been wanting to say for a while now. God bless you, Brian, and have a great day. Sincerely, my name. Okay. So, and I did, by the way, I did look at this this thing, and he's right. There's some really bad stuff in here. Um, you know, just it's supposed to be a Protestant Bible. Let's see if I can share this quick. Uh, and I'll be doing the full review later at some other time. But can you see down there the highlighted name? Pope Paul the Sixth, quoted in a Protestant Bible. Sure. So for all the liars out there and deceivers that say, you know, where's the fruit of his ministry? Where are the lives that are being changed? There you go. And there's a tote down there of hundreds and hundreds of other letters that we've received over the years. A lot of lives have been changed by this ministry. Uh, have I ever claimed to be perfect? No. Nope. I don't claim to be perfect, but uh, I have a Bible that is, and I'll point you to the book every single time. Go back through all the years of my preaching and teaching of the Word of God. It's about the Bible. That's your perfect standard right here, not me. Okay? So I just want to make that video. Thank you for your prayers, and thank you for your letters to those out there that send them. And uh, thank you for watching.